Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Pursue Your Spark podcast. I am so excited about my guest today. It is the fabulous Deborah Darling. And I was so excited that she actually said yes to be on my podcast. And as a glamorous and busy person as she is, so let me introduce Deborah Darling if you have not come across her on Facebook or Instagram yet. She uh, says about herself, she's an ageless style protagonist. I hope I pronounced this right. Model mm-hmm. and show off. She says about <laughs> herself, I believe that growing older should only be perceived as a great thing. That there are many wonderful opportunities still waiting to be discovered, marvelous adventures to be had, and a full life to be lived. So that okay. is Deborah Darling. <laughs> So I also wanted to share with you, Deborah has been featured all over this planet. She is, among other things, she's a contributor to the Australian magazine Broad. She's featured in Woman and Home magazine, in the Fine Line magazine, in the article 12 Silver Stunners, look at her hair, to follow on Instagram, featured on Josie, which I have just learned today is a slang word for Johannesburg. And uh, the Chantelaine <laughs> magazine, gorgeous hair, gray hairstyles that will inspire you to ditch the dye. Oh, I love this because look at us. Uh, she's also, which I learned today too, she's a co host in a pilot for a TV show that just recently aired or started. So I want to know more about this later. She is, mm-hmm. oh, and I saw your documentary, the document, the documented 60 second documentary, Deborah Darling. I loved it. Aside from <laughs> that, she was a zombie in the film Blind and, and several TV commercials. So I hope you guys are pumped about my guest, Deborah Darling. So welcome to the show. This is you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I I sound- don't I with that list of list of things going on no uh, I know you've been really busy with f- photo mm-hmm. shooting and new modeling jobs uh so it was I was really excited that you were able to come on the show and say hi and share you with my viewers so you live in South Africa if everybody wondered about the accent it's not an American accent so you live in South South Africa in, <laughs> in Joburg, as you guys call it. So yes. tell us more about it. Yeah, I've lived here for about 30 odd years, but I am English by, well, my, my parents were English, um, they, but I was born in New Zealand. So they, they went to New Zealand when they were newly married. Um, they were expecting me already then. Um, oh. So I was born in New Zealand, but we, they didn't stay there for long. I think they had itchy feet and they went back to England. Um, and then I've, I've spent the rest of my life moving around um, between Zambia and Zimbabwe and back to England. Um, but I've, I've been living in Johannesburg now for about 35 years or more. So I'm a, I'm a Joba girl, I think now, with, with a twist of, of English, maybe. <laughs> what, made you, what made you stick in uh, Johannesburg? Oh, I don't know. I came here. Um, I met a man. I met the man I, I married, um, and he was South African. So we we moved here together, and I had my daughter, and set up home and set up life, and and I'm and this is where I live. And that's yeah, it's how just, it goes. Yeah, it's just like here. I came from Germany to the United States and met my first husband. Had the kids got stuck here on the east coast of the United States, and that's yes. just where I end up living. That's it. That's yeah. how it goes. My daughter and grandson live here, so this is where I am for now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to tell the viewers that I actually have never met you in person, and I saw you on Instagram. And guys, uh, I literally started stalking Deborah. I saw her cool hair and I was like, oh my God, this woman is so cool. She's so brave about her gray hair. She loves her gray hair and she looks absolutely fabulous. (laughs) And uh, so I was like, oh my God, I got to know this woman. So I started literally stalking her on Instagram and listening to everything she had to say and the cool styles she had. And then I was wondering is that her real name, Deborah Darling, or how did she get to that? So, how did you become, or are you Deborah Darling? 
Uh, I'm not Deborah Darling. My name is Deborah Chambers. Um, and, it's, and it's the strangest thing because about probably uh, 10 or, or, or 12 years ago, um, this Deborah Darling name, people started calling me Deborah Darling. And I, 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 I honestly don't know why or how it happened. And everyone at work started calling me Deborah Darling. My name on the telephone list became Deborah Darling. My parking spot became Deborah Darling. It, it was, it was, it sort of get, got a life of its own and became more and more. So I, and I like it. So I'm using it. My friends yes. are my friends. We miss Darling, which I quite like as well. <laughs> miss Darling. That miss sounds Darling. very, yes. I think very cool. Very cool. Very yeah. fashionable. <laughs> so it's stuck. And it, it, it's interesting that it, that I, I didn't make it up. It sort of just, I don't know, grew on its own. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. Cause it, it is, when I look at you, you two look to me definitely more like a Deborah Chamber, not like a Deborah Chamber, <laughs> But like a Deborah Darling, that was the perfect <laughs> fit and and the perfect presentation on your Instagram account. So yeah. I have to tell the listeners too that I love your little videos um, that you post on Instagram. I think they're absolutely funny, informative, cheeky. Uh, <laughs> so tell me, how did you get to be so popular and so involved with Instagram? Ah. Uh, Oh, a friend told me when I when I started modeling and I had a few photographs that I was collecting, which was only three years ago, a friend said, you need to put your photographs on Instagram. And I, I didn't know what it was. I sort of heard of it, but I didn't know. So I sort of investigated and I, I loaded a few photos, uploaded a few photographs. I didn't have any followers and I didn't really know how it worked. Oh, yeah, that's there's that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then it, it, it also started to grow and I started to get a few followers. And then um, about a year ago, I started a, a, a little online styling business. Um, and when we were launching that, I started making videos in my car. I decided to make a video and they were about style, but they were sort of quirky and funny and silly. One of them, I'm driving around with a moustache in my car. Um, <laughs> So, and, and they were such fun and everybody enjoyed them. The, the business didn't, didn't take off. And I think we were a bit too soon in the market for an online styling business anyway. Um, yeah. I continued making, making the videos. So now I make them, it's not a regular thing, but I try and try and make one once, once a week and people seem to like them. So, <laughs> so I'm very silly in them, but yeah, they've become my thing, I suppose. You know, it's <laughs> like, uh, I always watch the video and I know you oftentimes video in the car and I know you guys drive on the left side of the road, but I'm always nervous. I'm like, Debra, keep your eyes on the road. Don't look at us in the camera. No, no, we're okay over here. Yeah. Well, I don't touch the phone at all. I try to be very, very safe and I don't touch it when I'm driving and I, and I glance at it, but, um, but I, I, it feels very safe and it feels as though I'm talking to somebody to a, to a passenger. So I, yeah. I, don't, I don't like to think that it's, that it's not safe, but I, I think, I think it's okay. Yeah. I think it's just as a mom, I'm like, I have my like, no hands on the steering wheel. I'm German. So we're always looking straight ahead. There's no yes. looking around because yes. your, your little stories that you tell on Instagram or the questions you ask are so um endearing and so like you just drive down the street and you you look at us the viewer and say hey you uh i just wanted to ask you about this or have you ever thought about that <laughs> and it it just it, it just warms my heart i just love it and i said that before well, it's thank just, you that's, that's nice to hear because sometimes i just it's just me being silly so it's it's lovely that people enjoy my silliness don't <laughs> my you think sense. Too many people take themselves way too serious with their Instagram. And, and the, although you're a styled, but that's part of you. It's not like you're making yourself up before you go on camera or on video other than your modeling jobs. But mm -hmm. you always look fabulous. And, I'm, and I did a little bit more today too than I normally do because I want to look good for you too. <laughs> Thank you. I do try to post. I mean, I do post for sometimes videos with no makeup and things. I try to be 
try to be, to be, I mean, nobody wants an, an unattractive photograph really, or video, but um, I do, well, you've seen, I post them with yeah. no makeup, sometimes my gym photographs and things. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think, you know, when in, in our world of Instagram, where everybody wants to look glamorous, and I just had a conversation today with somebody who says, oh, my friend, before she gets any photos or anything on Instagram, they have, she has to be styled. She has to have makeup. She has to have her hair done. Otherwise you won't ever see her on Instagram or any social media for that matter. And I know we're talking now a lot about that. Uh, we're not real on our social media, but you know what with you, I feel that is you. That is you're the hair, you're the makeup, you're glamorous. And swear to God, if I have my towel on my head and a glass of wine in my hand, I don't look glamorous. <laughs> but for, for, to me, at least, it is so you and it's not put on. That's what I think I'm trying to say. Oh, well, thank you. I do try to make sure I've got lipstick on before the ca you know, going to enter the camera. But, but I do try to keep it as real as, as possible. Yeah. Mm. So tell me about your modeling career. Ah, my little modeling career. Um, oh my God, there's this, I think this is such an incredible story. You shared it with me before. And I'm like, the listeners need to hear this because we're no young chickens and getting into modeling at our age, and we're not telling you guys how old we are. Mm -mm. Um, oh, no, I don't mind. I'm, I'm happy to tell you my age. <laughs> All right. There is Deborah. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you want to know my age? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, 56 and I'll be 57 in, in December. Uh, you're the young chicken because I'm already 57. I think it's important that we are. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's important to, to share our ages. I, I don't want to pretend to be younger than I am. So it's fine with me. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about modeling. I know you started modeling not too long ago. Yes. And how did that all happen? And it was about three years ago, um, and it was it was after my hair had turned silver that um, I started to get a lot of attention for my hair, and people would stop me in the street and ask me if they could take my photograph and, and talk to me about my hair. I mean, that happens now even. I get into conversations all the time with women saying, your hair looks great. I'd love to, to let my hair be gray, but my mum doesn't like it or my daughter doesn't like it or my husband doesn't like it. So there's a, uh, they, I'm always ambushed in shops and restaurants about to talk about my hair. Anyway, so I started to get a lot of attention about my hair. So I decided one night, you know, you should never leave a granny alone at home with an internet connection, unsupervised. <laughs> <laughs> one night I I sent some photographs off to, um, to, to, to an, I just Googled a, a, an agency and, and sent my photographs off and they phoned me and said, come and see us and sent me for a casting. I didn't know what to expect. I really, I really didn't have a clue. And it was a TV, a TV commercial. I, I, I really did, wasn't even sure that it was that from the brief. I, I was completely, and I'd never done anything like it before. So I went off to the casting but they had me do a few things and they cast me on my first casting. So I got my first advert, which is very lucky and very unusual. What and that was, was three it? Years ago. It was, a, was a, it? Deodorant, a deodorant advert. And I was the reception or the, the secretary or showing somebody in. It was, yeah, so, but it was lots of fun. I loved it from that moment. I loved it. I loved them doing my makeup and dressing me up and primping my hair. So I loved it. So I've, I've continued to do it. And I've, I've been in quite, quite a few, quite a few ads now. I've, I've, it happens sometimes that I go out and people say, oh, you're the lady from the TV. So <laughs> it's interesting. That was a good compliment. <laughs> yeah, people remember, even though, you know, it might just be a, you know, a second or two or a few seconds of your face. Yeah. So, um, yeah, because but I, cause, I enjoy it, and, and I've 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 had quite quite a few different jobs and um, some fashion shoots and some beauty shoots and TV commercials. So it's it's been fun. So it's been it's been three years. I started when I was fifty three, but accidentally almost. <laughs> accidentally, how? Well, accidentally, I've not sent my photographs off, not really expecting anything to come of it. I think so. So it's like but you send something into the universe and you go like, oh, let's see what happens. What do I have to lose? Yes. Yes. The true spirit of an entrepreneur. 
a bit a bit terrifying, but um, I mean, I enjoy it. And I still get terrified. I mean, when I go for a casting, I'm still nervous as I'm driving there thinking, oh my goodness, they're not going to like me or, you know, that's the thing is to, to, to be brave and to, to try new things. Yeah. And that definitely is a, is a very new thing and, and putting yourself out there. And I love that you're owning your gray hair. And I asked you that before, but I also want to share this with the listener that your hair, and if they see you on Instagram or they watch also the video recording of this, her hair is really that color. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People stop me and ask me who colors my hair more often than even who cuts it all about the same. Um, and I have to tell them that it's, it's not, it's not colored. So that, that's, people find that hard, hard to believe. Yeah, I yeah. get it from my mum. She had silver hair and she didn't like hers. She covered it up. So, um, yeah, we, many women do that. But I was like, I saw your hair and I said, wow, is this really real? And it's like, yeah, with the gray hair trend now being so trendy. Uh, mm -hmm. And you said, yeah. And then you have this really groovy, funky haircut. <laughs> it just fits your personality. It's, you know, I saw a picture of you when you, before you were Deborah Darling. <laughs> oh yes the one with the the coat and yes. I mean there was just no comparison to the two women that I saw at least in the picture and the the uh, style and the vibrancy of the person it's because you went through a huge transition share it with your story I used to be quite overweight um, all my life. I was the classic yo-yo dieter, losing, I don't know, losing five or 10 kilos or more and then putting it all back on again and more as, I mean, that's the classic, classic situation. And when I just, uh, leading up to my 50th birthday, I managed to, at last, um, get get a handle on it, and I've and I've I've been this weight for about seven years now, and it's changed my life. I've become more active. It's I am I think I, I am a different person. I am a I am a different person. I'm a healthier person. I'm I am completely different, as you say, from the photograph. Yeah. It's just it was stunning when I saw the like the before and after, and I'm going like, is that really the same person? So how did you get a handle on all of this, on your weight and, yeah, your weight? How did you, how, how did you get a handle on the transition? Um, I, I, I met a fabulous dietitian in, in, in Joburg, so, and I still, I still see her very occasionally. I haven't seen her probably for 18 months, but she's there if I need to kind of just get a bit of a focus and, and so on. So it's nice, nice to have, to have her, or if, or if I need help, you know, if I'm doing more sport or something like that, and I just need a, a bit more input, um, you know, if I'm upping my cycling and I just want to make sure that I'm eating more right and so on. Um, but one of the other things that I, that I really do believe made a difference was that I started to, to think about my, my, because I'd been to dietitians before. So, mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's not anything new, but I, I think, but I think that one of the things was that I started to think about my body in a different way. And I started to think, that in fact i wrote it down and i wish i could find it i wrote i remember writing an, a, a, an a4 um, piece all these notes because i was constantly in this in this this battle to lose weight and to to resolve this this problem that i had it with myself um and i started to think to consider that the body that i didn't that i didn't like and that i had grown to, to really loathe um from my teenage years when i started to put on weight that maybe it was a perfect body. It, you know, maybe it was perfect it, because, because of all the things I could do. You know, you think about that you can listen to music, that you can, that you can love, that you can dance, that you can make love, that you can, that, that, you, that you can have it. I mean, I bore a child, you know, and breastfed the child for a year. So <laughs> that's, that's amazing. I mean, that, that's incredible stuff. So I think I started to reframe the idea of, of the body that I felt disconnected from and that I didn't respect and didn't, mm -hmm. didn't care for. And, and I think that, that, that helped me to, 
to, to get a handle on it and to say, well, my body's okay. My body's actually very good. In fact, yeah. you know, all the things I can do. So, and I think that helped me. And I think I, I, I started to respect it and, and treat it, um, treat it in a more respectful way. And I think that that was a big shift for me. I can totally see that because I hear so many women that are I'm talking to, uh, in particular in our age bracket, that are like, I'm not losing weight, I'm doing everything. And, but they're, they all see themselves in a much more negative light. And like you said, you, you put it so pointedly, is, you know, our body can do so much. It doesn't matter if you have a, part, a few pounds more or less, or if you're rounder or more voluptuous or whatever. Uh, but really that you honor your body and you love your body for who you are and, and uh, really love the capabilities of your body. Yes. Um, yeah. Because you, you can't do a transformation with hating yourself, yes, hating your exactly. body. Yeah. It's, and it's a big shift, you know, to think this body that, that I didn't like produced a child. And that's amazing. You know, and it deserves, it deserves a bit of love for that oh it absolutely does because it's a it's a long time to produce and then and, and then like oh you stuck with them <laughs> in the most lo in the most loving way yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when you okay i gotta share with the guys here the girls uh that you are a triathlete that i had not known before so Tell us about what the role of exercise played after once you've made the decision that you love yourself, that you're an awesome person and your body is just exactly the way it should be. You lost the weight, but you didn't do it by just dieting. No, in fact, diet is one of the, one of the key things I think to, to making the change was taking the word diet out of my vocabulary. I don't, I don't, I don't even use it anymore. It's not, I think that was one of the key things is that I stopped dieting. In fact, I started, I, I, I learned that I could eat anything I liked diet. You know, this, this idea of starving yourself, the diet is gone. I don't diet ever again. I think that was another thing that, that sorted, sorted the problem out funnily enough. Um, now I've lost track of the question. Yeah. Oh, dieting. The, I'm like, I know yes. dieting is awful. It's like, I, and I know I like, I like to come up with another word. Sometimes you have to use the word diet. I'm on a diet, yes. But the overall notion that it has is just awful. Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> and, it's a, a healthy way of eating. It's a nutritious, you know, eating nutritious food. It's, it's it, you know, I'm on a diet. And you just know the minute you say that word, it, it isn't going to work. You are yep. going to be back where you were. So I removed that word. Good. And I started moving. So I started, I, I'd never owned a pair of trainers even. I mean, I was a, a couch potato. I did do swimming. I did do some swimming. I, I've always been quite a good swimmer, but, but running or going to gym or I didn't do any of that. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait. A trainer is a pair of shoes, right? A pair of shoes. Yes. A training, <laughs> training shoes. Because <laughs> a trainer to me is something you hook onto your bicycle. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we call them well, trainers, training shoes, or we actually call them tackies. There's a word for you. <laughs> okay, all right, tacky. I like it. That's what they say in Joburg. I'm wearing my tackies today. Yes, exactly. How cute. So, so I bought a pair and I started walking in the mornings. I mean, I really, I didn't like exercise at all. It wasn't for me at all. Um, and I started walking in the mornings before work, just really walking around the block for a block or two. And that gets a bit boring. So I sort of ran to the lamppost or ran to the dustbin or whatever it was. And soon I was sort of jogging along. I don't know if you could call it running. It's sort of more of a, a stumble around the block. But anyway, so I started running a little bit. I'm, a, I'm not a good runner at all still. Um, and then a friend persuaded me to or, or got me to go and try cycling, which I tried. And I, and I liked that. I immediately okay. liked it cycling so I bought myself a bike um and 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 started cycling so I need better friends don't I <laughs> <laughs> so so now I had the the three skills the swimming which I had always um done and kept up I used to do the mid mile mile every year that was the only thing I I ever did it's a mile open water swim here in wow in, that's a lot 
Yeah. So I, uh, another friend, a different friend, <laughs> um, persuaded me to to enter a, a, a sprint triathlon, which is a, a half an Olympic distance triathlon. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it's about, I think, a 750 meter swim, mm-hmm. um, a 20 kilometer ride, By, and a yeah. K run. So it's it's, yeah. it's 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 a nice it's a nice, and I and I did it. I was nervous. And I managed and it was fine. Um, so I've done a few of those, which is nice. I love the medals. I love getting medals. So <laughs> I'll do anything for a medal. But for a medal? Oh, I've got to keep that in mind. <laughs> yes. So, and then I did one. She persuaded me, the same friend, she persuaded me to, she's very sporty. She does a lot of tri- triathlons and so on. Um, and she persuaded me to do, uh, I did one Olympic distance, standard distance triathlon as well a couple of years ago. Which I completed. Um, I haven't done another one of those yet. I don't know. Maybe I will in the future. But um, for now, I'm um, I'm hoping to do some sprints this season again. They're they're a nice, achievable, um, but still a stretch. You know, it's you have to train. You have to be you have to be fit. You have to be moving. What is the weather like right now in South Africa? Um, we're coming into into spring. So spring, spring. is the first September officially, although it can still be quite chilly in the first part of part of September. So it's it's warming up and the mornings are getting lighter earlier, but it's it's still it's still a little bit cool. Okay, because I was just curious because we're just I mean we're still very hot here in DC, but the weather's winding down into more yeah. of a fall type uh, yeah, we're, temperatures. We're yeah, our little mm-hmm. spring flowers are coming out, and we spring is peeping through. It's not here yet properly. Well, oh. summer's not. Yeah. So I'm just looking into the weather for as far as triathlon is concerned. So like, oh, we need to know because the perfect weather to train is when it's, to me, when it's cool outside. Yes. Well, that's the trouble here. It gets so hot in the summer that it, the, mm-hmm. it's very, very, it's, I mean, cycling in that heat is, rah, it's tough. Now, I know you talked about your daughter, but you also have a grandson. And I know from your posts that you guys have a blast together. Me too. <laughs> so look at your face. Oh, we do. oh, he's my, he's my, oh, I love him to bits. He's a quirky little old fashioned chap. He's too funny. He's lovely. Um, he's 14 and a half now. Um, and we're great friends still. I hope it long, long may that last. I hope. And we, we've started cycling together. So we, we cycle together on, um, some, some Sundays, which is, which is fun. I um, remember the helmet hair. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, she's wearing a helmet here. I don't see a helmet. <laughs> no, it was my band to keep my hair down. Um, yeah, so he, he and I, Caleb, we, we, have a, we have a lovely time together. He, he calls me the cool granny. So that's nice. I hope it lasts. <laughs> yeah. So it's so nice that both of your, your daughter and your son live so close to you. So you get to see mm-hmm. much more of them and hang out with them. Yes. Yeah, which is uh, my family is in. Yeah, my family lives in Germany, so we don't have that that often. Um, yeah. It's fun because I uh, my kids now also live on opposite side of the world. My son lives in San Francisco, and my daughter in uh, Belfast, Ireland. And uh, we used to do things like that together. We would bike together, do triathlons together, or run together. I always cherish those times. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's, I feel very lucky that they are that they are close to me yeah uh, but you can't guarantee it you can't that's guarantee true on the same continent but yeah. for now, yeah. now one of the things that you share with me which I do want to touch on here is many of us are divorced at this age I'm divorced you've been divorced and also many of us are now back in the dating scene um and uh, as we get older, we all of us find it very difficult to find partners that we can relate to or that can relate to us in our stage of life because we, we're not putting up with crap anymore like when we were younger. So I know that you got divorced and then you met somebody. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's, and it's a strange thing. I must say that nobody imagines being divorced for any, any uh, it's, it's, it's just nothing. I was married for 25 years. I didn't think I'd be divorced ever. It, it, it just was never in my future. Not for me. Um, yeah. But anyway, I found myself divorced um, in my mid-40s. Mid 
Um, I didn't think I'd find somebody. I, I didn't imagine finding somebody else. And I think that you feel quite unattractive and old. I mean, that's so silly, isn't it? But that, that is the way it can be. Yeah. Um, I met, I did, I met a, a very, very nice man within sort of almost a, just a little bit less than a year later. Um, and, and we're still together. <laughs> Um, and that's that's sort of eleven or twelve years ago, and um, yeah, it's it's a different relationship completely, as you say. We we don't live together, we are not married, and we don't plan on changing those things. Um, we I, I like that we sort of choose every day to be together. It feels it feels very authentic. It feels it feels like. Um, that's where we want to be so while we want yeah. to be there we're there i think that's that's the difference when you're older you feel it it can be like that it's there's nothing clingy or it's a, a, a very different a different relationship it's because it's, nice. it's so refreshing to hear you mention this type of relationship because many women i talk to after the first time they're divorced they go oh never again i don't want a guy in my life i'm just by myself happy as can be and I think it's so important to have somebody that you feel close to, especially as you get older. I see it with my clients that are in much older stages in their life, uh, but not necessarily marrying, but having the option to uh, be with a partner on your own terms. And I want the, the women out there to understand that this is an option. This is not weird or this is not something, oh my God, I can't do this. I have to marry or now we have to move in together. This is, um, I would have never thought I would marry again and actually move in with my now husband, but it was just so cute. I couldn't say no. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I would have, my second choice would have been exactly what you have in your life. I open a, a relationship that allows you to live your life on your own terms with a partner that does the same and you love each other to death. So mm -hmm. I think that's so refreshing. Yeah, it's nice. So it, it feels, um, obviously it's been a, a long time. It's an old, it's an old comfortable relationship, but we have our own space. I have my own home. I can, you know, I, my girlfriends can visit me for sleepovers or, you know, it's, you can have, I think it's, I think it's the best of, of both worlds. I think you get the best of each other mm -hmm. when you, have time to 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 do your own things and I, I i i can't see it running any other way but let's see never say never <laughs> true good i have one more question for you before we close up is what is the most scary thing you've done in your life ah oh, you know, I'm consistently scaring myself. I think that's my new motto <laughs> is to do one thing to scare yourself every day. I don't manage every day, but I do a lot of, a lot of scary things. But I think the first thing I did that, that, that started off my, my transition, my transformation, if you like, was um, a, a year or two after I got divorced, I, so I was in my late 40s, I went to Argentina on my own for three months. Wow. I found myself sort of between jobs and had a little bit of money saved up. So I went off to Argentina. I wanted to learn to speak Spanish. I, I didn't learn to speak Spanish enough because I had too much fun with all the people I met there. <laughs> <laughs> going, to, going out and about. Um, but that was terrifying. I mean, I remember, because I didn't speak Spanish at all. I didn't speak a word of it. And I remember laying in bed then and I thought, how am I going to, catch the train because I went to I went to school there in the mornings to to learn to speak Spanish but I didn't know how I was going to catch the train I I didn't I, I didn't know how I was going to do anything and I'd lay in bed the night before I went and I just thought I can't do it I'm I'm petrified how am I going to do it I'm going to have to cancel everything anyway I went I think that was my first lesson to my first step to learning that it's scary. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I made friends um, from different parts of the world and I had a, a beautiful time and it was all fine and I managed to buy the train ticket. <laughs> oh, that's amazing because so, that is a scary. Three months great. is a long time to go somewhere by mm. yourself, not speaking the language. Mm. Well, 
more power to you. That set you up to become the Deborah darling that you are. <laughs> so tell our listeners, <laughs> tell our listeners how they can reach you and find you and hire you and all these good stuff. Well, I think the best way is, is, is Instagram. Um, okay. I'm Deborah darling. So I'm, I'm quite easy to find on Instagram and that that's that simple. Um, Facebook as well, Deborah Darling as well. So those, those are probably the, the easiest ways. My website, DebraDarling.com. So everything, everything hooks back to Deborah Darling or if you're at a complete loss, Deborah Chambers. Good. I will put show, uh, links in the show notes so we can have you the at Facebook, Instagram. Let's see where else. Uh, YouTube. You have a YouTube channel? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. So people can easily find you. They can. I'm all over the place, it seems. <laughs> well, you're keeping busy, that's for sure. So I want to say thank you so very much that you had time to come to speak with us today and share your experience and your life with us. Because I think you're not only a darling, but you're fabulous as far as I'm concerned. Thank you so much. And thank you for talking to me. It's been fun. We must do it again. Oh, I love talking to you. I like the last time we did that, we spoke for an hour and <laughs> we're like, wait, 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 we're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> so Deborah, I'll see you soon and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>